The Van Allen radiation belts that surround Earth are probably one of the least understood parts of space for the average person. That is, if they know they exist at all. For some reason, a myth has been widely circulated online that the Van Allen belts are these deadly zones of radiation around Earth that nobody can cross through, and also because of that, the moon landing was fake. I'll say that right here that all of that is completely false. The Van Allen belts, despite what you may have heard, are not immediate death traps to kill everyone who passes through them. Even if you don't believe the Apollo missions are real, which they are because they are impossible to have been faked, SpaceX sent the Polaris Dawn mission straight through them a few months ago, and the crew was fine. But anyways, with the conspiracy stuff out of the way, what are the Van Allen belts really? While they won't immediately kill everyone who goes into them like some people like to suggest, they are still somewhat dangerous. So what are they and how do they form? And most excitingly, what can we do to get rid of them? There are two main Van Allen belts, the inner and the outer. They're about 400 to 36,000 miles away from Earth, though sometimes a third belt can exist before fading away after a few weeks. This is because the Van Allen belts are made of electrically charged particles trapped by Earth's magnetic field. Earth's magnetic field deflects particles like the solar wind from hitting the planet, which significantly lowers the amount of radiation we experience on the surface. But a lot of these solar wind particles, which are electrically charged, get caught by the magnetic field, which is also charged and trapped around Earth. The particles in them range from electrons to protons to the nuclei of helium atoms. So, these particles can be harmful in large doses. If they were all hitting Earth, we'd have a problem, which is why it's good we have a magnetic field. Because of all this radiation, satellites orbiting near or in the belts have to be shielded, or otherwise change their orbit to avoid the thickest parts of the belts. What's more, the particles in these belts can get as hot as 35,000 degrees Fahrenheit, or 20,000 Celsius. So how does anything, let alone human spacecraft, survive entering these belts? Because of one important factor. Yes, the Van Allen belts have electrically charged radioactive particles in it, but it is extremely sparse. The density of particles in the Van Allen belts is only marginally higher than the vacuum of space. So it doesn't matter how hot or dangerous the particles are if you aren't hitting them. It's the same reason it gets colder when you go up a mountain. The air is still just as hot as it was at lower elevation. But the thing is, there's less air meaning you're being hit with less air particles, and less heat is being transferred from the sun to the air to you. The air also expands, which cools it down. So, mountains feel a lot colder than they otherwise would. It's the same in the Van Allen belts. Temperature is just the measurement of how fast particles are moving. The Van Allen belt particles aren't hot in the sense they're emitting a lot of heat. They're hot in the sense they're moving very fast. They're being hit by particles so rarely, it just doesn't matter. The Van Allen belts are completely harmless if you only remain in them for a short period of time. The Apollo missions only spent a few hours in them, and so did Polaris Dawn. There wasn't enough time for enough particles to hit the spacecraft to cause any problems. There just isn't enough stuff up in the belts to damage anything on short timescales. It doesn't matter how fast or deadly or radioactive the particles are if they aren't hitting you. So the real danger that comes with the Van Allen belts is just spending a long time in them. If the Apollo missions had spent several days or weeks inside the Van Allen belts, then they would have had a problem. That's why satellites need to be shielded from them. They don't usually change orbits, they mostly stay at the same altitude. So, some satellites are just constantly exposed to the belts, and even though particles are so rare in them, it eventually adds up over years. That being said, the density of particles in the belts does fluctuate. If there's a solar storm going on, for example, the sun can shoot a lot of particles towards Earth that get caught in the belts, making them far more dangerous for a short period of time, like for a few days. In 2013, this even caused the existence of a temporary third Van Allen belt that disappeared after four weeks. So, all in all, the Van Allen belts on Earth are harmless. They're full of trapped radiation, but there's so little of it that it doesn't matter, and as long as you're quick, you can pass through them completely unharmed. There are only two scenarios where the Van Allen belts actually become dangerous. During a large solar storm where they're filled up with a lot more particles, or if you spend a long amount of time in them. Other than that, they're perfectly safe. Earth isn't the only planet that has them, either. Jupiter's radiation belts are far more extensive, and those are the actually dangerous ones. The Van Allen belts around Earth may be annoying, but Jupiter is another story. Jupiter's moon Io is right in the middle of a large radiation belt, and it's so massively irradiated that even with shielding, if you were staying on Io, you'd be dead in a matter of hours. On Europa, a matter of days. Jupiter's radiation belts are so strong that Io, the most volcanically active object in the solar system, gets its atmosphere stripped away. Volcanic gases are really good at building atmospheres, and the only reason Io is airless is because Jupiter gets rid of its atmosphere faster than it can form. If you're looking for dangerous Van Allen belts, look no further than Jupiter. 
Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune are also known to host radiation belts of their own, though all of them significantly weaker than Jupiter's. Mercury might be able to host some small and temporary ones, and we know that Venus and Mars don't have them at all. The Braundorf LSR J1835 plus 3259 is some, and there have been some hints of magnetic fields around some exoplanets, most interestingly the Venus-sized exoplanet YZ Seti b. Radiation belts are everywhere. They can range from annoying to outright deadly. So, now that we know what radiation belts are, the question now is how do we get rid of them? Earth's Van Allen belts, despite being pretty tame in comparison to the other planets, are still a pain for space exploration. Apollo had to take a trajectory to put them through the least dangerous parts of it. Satellites need shielding, as I've already mentioned. All of this adds risk, complexity, and cost to our space missions. We can't do the science we want to do around Jupiter because its radiation belts are so strong they fry our sensors. Juno has to take a highly specific orbit around Jupiter just to avoid them, and Pioneer 10 nearly just stopped working when the radiation belts were 10 times stronger than predicted. It would be best if we could get rid of them. And there actually are several proposals for draining the Van Allen belts of their particles, and making the space around Earth and other planets much safer. In 2002, the High Volt, or High Voltage Orbiting Long Tether, was proposed. Essentially, it's just creating a 62-mile or 100-kilometer long tether, which would be both electrically charged and uninsulated. It would be deployed from a satellite on a slightly elliptical orbit to reach the entire belt. A power supply would then be used from the satellite to electrically charge the entire tether. The voltage from the tether would then deflect the particles in the belts, causing them to be ejected out of them entirely, to either go out into space or harmlessly burn up in Earth's upper atmosphere. Essentially, Highvolt proposes a way to dissipate the Van Allen belts, making them significantly safer over time. This could, in theory, reduce the amount of radiation present in the belts by 99% within just two months of deployment. There's also a concept to broadcast very low frequency radio waves into the belts from Earth, which would scatter and eject particles from the belts. This wouldn't require a satellite and could be done on the ground, which is a nice advantage, though it is difficult to get radio waves like this through the atmosphere. You could also just have a satellite do it, but it would require a lot of energy. But I can't find any numbers as to how much would need to be broadcasted, or what its final results would be. Of course, humans could not only drain the Van Allen belts, but also increase them. In 1962, when the US detonated the Starfish Prime nuclear bomb in space, which created an explosion so large it was visible clearly in Hawaii, 900 miles away, it created an artificial ring of electrons around Earth, making the Van Allen belts more dangerous. Should a large-scale war happen in space where nukes are used, that is something we'll need to be concerned about, and knowing how to remove dangerous particles in the Van Allen belts is a good start. However, it's not currently known if there would be any unintended consequences to draining the Van Allen belts. From what we can tell right now, there wouldn't be, but we can't really be sure until we try. Earth's magnetic field protects us, and messing with it might not be a great idea. But assuming there aren't any risks involved, there really isn't a reason why we shouldn't remove the Van Allen belts. As far as we can tell, they're nothing but a pain for satellites and human exploration, and the cost to remove them might be justified. They are refilled over time, so we wouldn't need to do this over and over, but it might be worth it. Though because the Van Allen belts around Earth really aren't as dangerous as they've been made out to be, it might be worth just living with them instead. But this also isn't limited to Earth. If we want to send humans to Io and Europa, for example, it might be a good idea to bring radiation belt draining satellites with us so our crew doesn't die of radiation sickness within hours. It'll also allow us to do things like orbit Io and Europa directly with robots, without the risk of their circuits being fried. Jupiter's radiation belts are actually significantly dangerous to humans and spacecraft, so getting rid of them would be ideal. In short, the Van Allen belts are not these radiation death zones people like to say they are. They have hot charged particles in them like protons and electrons, but at least around Earth, they're very sparse and not a danger to crew just passing by. They're formed by all sorts of processes, from solar radiation to cosmic rays, and can become far more dangerous during solar storms or nuclear explosions. So long as you don't spend very long in them, like the Apollo missions, you'll be perfectly fine. They're only dangerous if you spend a long amount of time in them, which is annoying for satellites. Other planets have them as well, and Jupiters are far more deadly. Luckily, there are potential ways we can remove the Van Allen belts, which could make space travel significantly safer and enable exploration of worlds we currently can't survive on even with robots like Io. Who knows, maybe in a few decades we'll live on a planet that, due to human technology, no longer has radiation belts around it. 
Until then, the Van Allen belts will remain essentially just a nuisance we'll have to live with, though they are pretty interesting to study. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, check out my other videos about space and space colonization.